Hey guys, Miss Riggs here. Um, on our last video, we talked about how populations form and how populations grow. So for this video, we're going to expound on that and talk about how it, species interact with each other. Um, so this was going to talk about basically how different populations of species interact with other species within their environment. So let's go ahead and get started. So an organism's niche um, this is going to include this, this species' home and environmental factors um, that helps them survive within a population or within an ecosystem. So an organism's niche is different than its habitat because its habitat is just talking about its home. Um, the organism's niche is basically how it interacts within this environment, so how it interacts within its habitat, how it interacts with other species. These are all contributing to an organism's niche. It's basically the role of the species within its ecosystem with other species as well as its habitat. So how do species interact? Well, there's different ways that species interact and they can actually interact in multiple ways. It doesn't just have to be one specific way. So five basic ways that species interact is competition, predation, parasitism, mutualism, and commensalism. So we'll go through and we'll talk about each of these individually. So competition is basically, it's pretty self-explanatory. Um, we all know what it means to compete. Well, animals in general um, compete within each other, within this a species. Um, they also compete with other species. So why is competition important? Um, well, in order for species to survive, they are going to compete with other species to either um, create their own territory or to get food resources or water, different resources that they might not be able to get if they didn't compete with another species. Um, so here you have two rams that are fighting for a territory. So this is an interspecies competition. Um, there's also a lot of species that, that compete with other species in order to protect their habitat or protect their resources. Um, so competition is a relationship in which different individuals or populations attempt to use the same limited resources. Can be a determining factor on which species or which organism actually maintains a, a region or an area um, from other members of their own population or other populations. Um, so the winner of these competitions is going to get more resources or they're going to claim a whole territory within an ecosystem. Um, so competition is really important in general. They are competing for not only resources, they're also competing for mates, um, and they're competing for habitats. So adaptations within competition is also important. So there can be two different species that have they maintain a similar niche. So they actually provide similar things within that environment. Um, so they learn how to kind of cohabitate instead of always competing because if they're always competing, it's not going to necessarily be good for either of the species. So here we have some barnacles and these barnacles are sharing or cohabitating within a specific environment and so they share a niche. Um, when, this, when this species of barnacles starts to go down or is taken away, then this species of barnacles actually moves down into this species niche as well. Um, so the only reason that they have different niches is because they're basically sharing their niches in order to minimize competition. And same here, we have different species of birds and they're going to interact in different ways. They're going to claim different parts of a tree. So you have um, some species might claim the upper portion of a tree, another species might claim the inner and bottom portion of a tree, another species might claim the middle of a tree. So in order to decrease competition, they're kind of compensating for each other's niches and sharing their territory. So predation. 
Um, predation is basically involves a predator and a prey. So it is important to note that a predator can also be prey to another species. So this isn't a fixed label for um, many predator-prey relationships. Um, you can see here we have larger animals. This is going to be a lion that's kind of an that's an apex predator. So it does not have um, much competition outside of its own species. Um, so this lion is going to be the predator here, and this is the zebra is going to be the prey. Similar here with the bear and the salmon. The bear is the predator, the salmon is the prey. Um, here we have a praying mantis, and it looks like it's eating some sort of larva. Um, and in general, if we think about a praying mantis, we would think of a praying mantis as prey. In this situation, it is a predator, but in most situations, it would be prey. So that's an example of how you can be, um, different situations can be labeled different ways. So a predator is an organism that feeds on another organism, and then the organism that is fed upon is the prey. Parasitism. So parasitism basically needs a host, and it's, and it's harming its host while it's thriving. Um, so a lot of parasites will attach to a host and um, utilize its blood or eat other nutrients um, before the actual host gets those nutrients. So most of the time parasites are taking away nutrients of their host. So they're harming their hosts by taking away those nutrients. So here we have a parasite within this fish and it's actually, um, eats away at its tongue and kind of takes its nutrients from this fish. Um, here is actually, um, mistletoe. And we think of mistletoe here as you know, something that you hang and you kiss underneath at Christmas time, but it's actually a parasite. So nothing says love like parasites. Um, it's taking these nutrients from this, from this tree. Mutualism. Mutualism is a close relationship between two species. It's in which each species provides a benefit to the other. So a lot of species might, one species might carry, um, a seed or carry some pollen away from the plant, like this bee and flower interaction, where while this flower is providing nutrients for this bee. So that's a mutualistic relationship. Um, over here we have a bird that's cleaning the mouth of a crocodile, and so that's a symbiotic relation or a mutualistic relationship as well, because um, they're both benefiting from benefiting from that interaction. Um, bacteria in our gut is a good example of a mutualistic relationship. Without bacteria in our gut, we would not survive. Um, good bacteria fights off bad bacteria, uh, whereas we are the host of that bacteria and we're providing nutrients for that bacteria at the same time. So those are all mutualistic relationships. Commensalism. This is a relationship in which one species benefits and the other species is neither harmed nor helped. A lot of times when we're talking about commensalism, we're talking about um, a species, two species that interact while one, one species is forming a habitat for another species. So like a tree here would form a habitat for a squirrel. The squirrel wouldn't help the tree, but it wouldn't harm the tree either. Um, when we were talking about rainforests, um, orchids are going to grow at the top um, canopy of large trees. Um, they're able to grow on these trees and get sunlight and rain that they need to thrive, but the trees are not benefited from this interaction, but they're also not harmed from this interaction. So that's called commensalism. Symbiosis and coevolution. So basically symbiosis is, is any interaction that's not harming another um, species. So it could either be a mutualistic relationship, um, or a commensalism relationship, but it's just kind of an umbrella term for those relationships. Um, Coevolution is when one species evolves and so another species kind of evolves with it. Um, so this is an example of coevolution. We have this flower that has kind of evolved this curved shape. And so we have these bird species that over time evolved a curved shape in order to reach into 
um, the flower. So this is an example of coevolution. We have a similar um, situation here with this insect in this flower. Okay, so that is our lecture on how species interact with each other. Um, so again, remember, you can rewind and fast forward this as many times as you'd like. It will be posted for the rest of the year. So feel free to go back before tests or whenever you feel like you need to brush up on, um, on this video. Um, remember to fill out your note outline, and I'll see you all in class.